Hi, and welcome to Code Tutorials. Today we'll be talking about creating vertical progress bars using the vertical progress bar widget from our key add-ons for Elementor plugin. Using this widget, you can showcase the progress of your projects, ideas, campaigns, and more. With the vertical progress bar widget, you can create bars of varying thicknesses, color, animation speeds, width borders, and without. You can also adjust the positioning of the title and percentage number that go along with the progress bar. Finally, you'll be able to pick how the active and inactive parts of the progress bar line will be styled. Alright, let's see how we can make one of these for ourselves. In the back end, go to the Elementor sidebar and search for the vertical progress bar. There it is. Drag it over to the page. And this is what the default vertical progress bar looks like. But before we can start customizing it, I want to share a tip. If you plan to add more instances of the vertical progress bar, let me add a few to show you. Just a moment. Alright. Now, I have three vertical progress bars and they're all displayed one underneath the other. If you want to place multiple elements one next to the other in a section, but you don't want to divide your row into columns, there are a few things you need to do. Start by clicking on the first progress bar to select it. Then go to Advanced and open the Positioning section. In here, you'll want to set the width to Inline, and I'll make the same adjustment to my remaining two progress bars. By setting the width to Inline, we are going to help our elements align side by side in the same column. Let me do the final one so we can see how they would look all together. And there, all three are in the same column and arranged one next to the other. They also take up the full width of my column and are evenly spaced. Now, if you notice your elements aren't evenly spaced, it's likely you're using the default column alignment settings. To change that, click here to open the column settings. Then make sure that your horizontal align option is set to space between. This will arrange all the widgets in the same column evenly across the available space. Of course, there are several other options here that you can try out, depending on your intended design. But I won't go into them now, as that's not the focus of this video. Later, when we cover the widget settings, and when I've customized my progress bar, I'll duplicate it. This will let me have all the same settings across different progress bars without adjusting them over and over again. And since I've adjusted the appropriate column and positioning options, all my duplicated widgets will be evenly arranged. So I can remove these pairs that I made. Alright, now we're ready to start customizing our vertical progress bar. Now I'd like to generally start us off with the content tab. It is, after all, where our general settings are. But for this widget, it's easier to showcase the options if we start from the style tab. The first thing we have here is the progress bar height. The value is in pixels. I'll set 294 to make my bar just a touch shorter as the default value is 300 pixels. Then we have the border type. So if you want a border, you can make it solid, double, dotted, dashed, or grooved. I'll make mine solid just to show you. If you set a border, you'll have the option to change its width and color as well. The value for the width is in pixels, so you can increase it until you're happy with the look. Then, underneath that, you can set which color your border will be. It's very straightforward. As I don't plan to use a border for this tutorial, I'll just set this back to none. The following options let us adjust the progress bar colors. The first is for the active line, that's this black part here. I'll change it by adding a new hex code. There we go. And the second option is for the inactive color, which I'll just make an even lighter gray. There. After this, we have the active line opacity option. By default, the progress bar colors are entirely opaque, meaning their value is 1. However, to make one of the lines transparent, just set 0 here. And if you want your line to be half transparent, you can set a decimal value of 0.5. OK. Then, the inactive line opacity. Well, it works the same way. If I set 0, the line turns transparent. It vanishes. And if we set 0.5, it becomes half transparent. Alright. Now, we have the active and inactive line thickness. I'll make mine wider by setting 83 in both fields. 
OK. The following set of options is for the text style. So, before we get into them, let's customize the text so we're not working with the dummy content. To do that, go to the Content tab. And I want to show you the percentage type option first. This option lets us pick the position of the percentage number. Let me show you what I mean. Our default setting is fixed bottom, and we can see how that looks on the right. But when we switch it to fixed right, we get the number to the right of the bar. Then, if we change that to fixed on, we have the text overlapping the bar. Finally, if we change this to floating on, both our number and text end up moving with the bar and rest on top of it when it loads. I'll set mine back to fixed bottom, as that's the one I want to use. Once you've determined the type you want to use, you can start changing the placeholder text. The percentage number lets us change the number that will be shown. I'll set, for example, 20. Then we have the title field for changing the bar title. I'll set design. In terms of other interesting options here, there's the enable gradient fill. If we set it to yes, it will let us display the active part of the progress bar line with the two color gradient fill. So it looks like this. You can adjust the colors by setting a new start color and a new end color. So you can make it reflect your site palette or your brand colors, whatever you like. Another interesting option is the Enable Pattern Fill. This one applies to the inactive part of the progress bar line. When we set it to Yes, it opens an additional option that allows us to upload an image that will serve as the pattern for the inactive line. OK, let me put all of this back. There. Animation Duration. This is where we can set the speed of the animation that makes it seem like the bar is loading. The value is in milliseconds, so if I want to speed my animation up, I'll set 500. Now we can see that the progress bar line moves much quicker. I'll erase it as I'm happy with the original speed. Our last set of options in the Content tab are Developer Tools. When we open them, we can see there's just one option here. And we can switch its setting to Yes and get it to display the widget in the form of a standard WordPress shortcode. So we get this text. And we can easily copy it for use elsewhere on our site. Alright? That's it. Let's get back to the Style tab and finally go through the text style options I mentioned earlier. When we open them, we can see the first thing here is the option to pick the title tag. You can pick anything from H1 to H6. And I'll be using H6 for this. Then we have the title color option. I'll change mine so it matches the progress bar better. There. After that, we have the title typography option. In here, we can pick the font for our title. You can scroll through this list or search for the font if you know its name. Then the size option lets us adjust the font size. If we set something here, it'll overwrite the title tag settings we picked earlier. With the widget position, we can turn our title bold or use one of the number values to fine tune its weight. OK. Then we have the text transform, which we can use to make our title uppercase, lowercase, capitalized, or normal, which is the same as our default. And under style, we can make our title normal, which is the same as default, or turn it italic or oblique. Following that, the decoration lets us add an underline an overline, a line through, or we can use none of these, as is our default. The line height option. It's in M's by default, but you can switch it to pixels. If I set two M's, we can see the space around the text increases a bit. I don't think I need this now, so I'll just remove it. Following that, we have the letter spacing option. If I set three pixels here, we'll get wider spread letters. And that's it for the typography options. The next thing we have here is the title margin. So that's the margin going all around the title. If we'd like to keep the margin even all around, we can just increase it like this. Or we can click here to reset the default values and to delink the individual margin sides. Now we can adjust specific fields without the change reflecting on all four of them at once. So I'll make the top margin 21 pixels and leave the rest as they are. All right. Then, with the number color option, we can pick the, well, color for our number. And the typography options here apply to the number, but they are otherwise identical to the ones we saw for customizing the title. 
Since we've already covered what these options do, I won't go into them again, I'll just quickly change the weight to 500. There we go. And our last option, the number margin. I'll add a bit more space between the number and title by setting two pixels for the top margin. Alright, that's it. Now, the last options tab, advanced, well, we opened it briefly at the start. Besides positioning, it has several useful options for responsiveness, entrance animations and more, but since it's available for all Elementor widgets and not unique to our vertical progress bar widget, we won't be covering it further in this tutorial. Okay. If you need multiple progress bars and you're happy with the one you made, you can simply duplicate it. To do that, right click on it and go to duplicate. I'll make a few more progress bars so you can see how they will look together, but I'll skip ahead with the video because you've already seen the process. And here we are now. My progress bars are all done. The sheer number of them looks quite impressive, doesn't it? Don't forget, you can stylize them all to match, or you can give them different looks within a group. It's up to you to see which of the possibilities offered by this plugin works best with the style and design of your site. Now, if we look back on the landing page, we can see the different things we can do with the vertical progress bar widget and the potential variations we can make using it. Here, for example, is the style and look I used to make my progress bars for this video. I hope going through this together has helped you to see how easy making progress bars can be with the key add-ons for Elementor plugin and its vertical progress bar widget. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please drop us a line in the comments below. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about new theme guides and tutorials. Thanks for watching!